Hi friends, this is Miss Hutchins, and today we're going to read a biography. A biography tells about the life of a real person. But before we read it, I want to go over and review what central idea is. So the topic of a biography is always the person the text is about. The central idea of a biography is the most important idea or point the author wants readers to take away after reading about a person's life. Remember that good readers figure out the central idea of a text by paying attention to supporting evidence. Authors include small pieces of information or details to tell more about the central idea. A detail might be information about a person's family. Authors may also include facts or examples about the person. A fact might be the date a person was born. An example might be the things the person did to be a good student. Today we're going to practice finding the central idea in a story called The William Hoy Story. The title of this story is The William Hoy Story. It is a biography. It has details that will help us learn about a real person called William Hoy. I want you to look at the cover. What do you notice? What game are the men playing? Do you think the story takes place in present time or long ago? Why do you think that? What do you think is important about William Hoy? What questions do you have based on the picture of the cover? Remember, the purpose of reading a biography is to learn about a person's life. Let's learn about William Hoy. William scooped dust to dry the sweat off his slick rubber ball. He stared at the small X he chalked on the barn wall. He closed his eyes. He opened them and threw. Bam! He hit the mark. He stepped back so he could try again. His mother waved her arms. She was applauding him. She touched her fingers to her mouth to signal eating. He read her lips as she said, dinner. William pulled out his pad and pencil. He scribbled, just a few more. I want to be perfect for tryouts. His mother nodded. His family was passing the mashed potatoes around the table when William pushed open the door. He read his father's lips telling him to wash up for dinner. He also read what his father's lips mouthed to his mother. Baseball, his father said, shaking his head. It will never last. How do William and his family talk with each other? As you can tell by now, William is deaf, which means that he can't hear. So in order to be able to understand what people are saying, he reads their lips. And as you could also see on the previous page, he writes notes to his family. Still, William couldn't wait to try out at his school, the Ohio State School for the Deaf. At tryouts, he threw the ball. He caught it. He batted. He waited. Too small, the team captain said. William never got much taller than five foot five. He couldn't do anything about that. But maybe they'd give him a chance if he aimed better and ran faster. So every day, after homework and chores, he practiced. One day, William was standing outside the cobbler shop where he fixed shoes, wistfully watching men play baseball in a far-off field. A foul ball crashed by his feet. With his strong, sure arm, he threw the ball straight into an amazed player's waiting hand. Hey, kid, the player called. Want to join us? But William couldn't read the player's lips from where he was, so he turned back to work. Here's William, and here's who he threw the ball to. The man ran to William and tapped his back to get his attention. William whirled around, and this time, when the man repeated the question, he understood. He scrambled happily to the outfield. William threw the ball smack into his teammates' hands. When he was up at bat, he sent it soaring where no one could catch it. What's your name? asked one of the players. 
William Hoy, William wrote. The man looked at the piece of paper a long time. He seemed to be thinking. Do you want to try out for our team, he asked. William, at, he asked William at last. William grinned. He sure did. There's his notepad that he has to write on to help communicate. William soon learned life in the hearing world wasn't easy. Unlike his parents, few people used sign language in the 1880s, and certainly not in baseball. He won a spot on the team, the first team he tried out for, but the manager smirked when he offered William less money than he paid the others. I quit, William told him with his notebook. He quickly found another team. But even on his new team, some players talked behind his back, so he wouldn't know what they're saying. Others hit their mouths so he couldn't read their lips. Poor William. What does William learn about the hearing world? How do you think this makes him feel? Use text evidence to support your answer. Well, looking at the pages in the book, I can tell that it makes him feel sad and upset. And over here, you can tell that he was angry whenever he found out he was making less money than the other players. So, One day, a pitcher played the meanest trick of all. William let three pitches go by because he thought they were balls. He was too far to read the umpire's lips and didn't know they were actually strikes. He stood, gripping his bat, waiting for the next pitch but the next pitch never came. William was confused. Suddenly the pitcher burst out laughing. He pointed to the fans in the stands laughing too. William's face grew hot. He walked off quickly. He wasn't going to cry. Not about baseball, he told himself. We are not being very kind to him. He jammed his hands in his pockets. Paper crunched against his fist. He pulled out a letter from his mother. He read again how much she missed him. William missed his family too. He remembered how his mom would raise her arms to applaud him. That's it! William pulled out his pad and drew pictures. He scribbled words next to the pictures. He wrote, he wrote, he wrote! He ran to find the umpire. The umpire read William's notes. Hmm, yes, that could work, he said. What do you think the umpire will do next? Make a prediction. The next time William was at bat, the umpire raised his right hand for a strike and his left for a ball. He used American Sign Language symbols for safe and out. This time William got on base. He stole bases. He scored. In his first year in the majors, he led the National League in stolen bases. With his strong, sure arm, he became the first player to throw three base runners out at the plate in one game from the outfield. William taught his teammates signs so they could discuss plays without the other team hearing. They loved it. The fans enjoyed learning signs too. In those days, before speakers and giant screens, hearing the umpire's calls from the back of the bleachers was hard to do. Now, even the farthest member of the crowd could see the signals. Teams begged for William. He played for several before signing with the Cincinnati Reds near his family's farm. William was proud to show his parents that the boy who didn't make the school team was one of the most popular players in baseball. When William stepped up to the plate, shaking his bat over his shoulder, fans knew he'd hit or walk his way to first, then swiftly steal his way around the bases. Carefully watching the signals, he led the American League in walks in 1901. He was called the King of Centerfield because for 10 years he was ranked among the top five outfielders to get hitters out by catching hard to reach fly balls. After William became a star, he thought nothing could surprise him. Then one day when he ran out onto the field, fans waved their arms from the stands just as his mother did when he was a boy. They waved hats too. 
William said he'd never cry about baseball, but he did cry at the sight of deaf applause. All he'd wanted to do since he was a boy was find a way to play his favorite game. He never dreamed he'd change how the game was played, but he did, and we still cheer him today. How does William Hoy change the game of baseball? 